friends. Welcome back to My Witchy Kitchen. I'm Sandy, your crafty vegan witch. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make candles. A very fun and relaxing thing to do. Today is my day off. Glass of wine and some candle making should be fun and you guys can join me. I actually like to repurpose containers to make the candles. Let me, hold on this so if you soak these you just soak them in water and then the labels will peel off nicely if there's any residue use a little oil wipe it on there and the stickiness will come off and then you have this beautiful jar be ashamed to throw these things away now today I'm excited I'm using wooden wicks this is something I just started experimenting with a couple of months ago the nice thing with the wooden wicks is they give a little crackling sound so it's kind of like you have a little mini fire it's a nice little ambiance um, candle to have burning I'm going to be using some essential oils to scent it. You can skip the essential oils completely if you like to and make unscented candles. Make sure if you're using these for candle magic and you know what you're gonna use them for at the time that you make them, which I find the most beneficial instead of just to make a bunch and use them, although it's nice to have some on hand like that as well. It's nice to go into it though and set those intentions in the beginning and manifest what it is that you would like to see these candles do. So so think about that as you make your candles today. Is there a certain purpose that you have for this? Um, you know, it can be just as simple as you don't have to use it in any, any rituals. It could just be for daily burning, but think about it. You know, do you want love instilled and coming out as this candle that you're making for some romantic evening and you want to make sure that that's instilled in there? Are you making it just as an everyday candle to burn in your home? Uh, maybe in a home with children, you would like to instill peace and harmony in your candle. So when you light that, keep that thought in mind. Um, I'll go in more into some candle magic and how that works in a later video. So again, Comment down below, let me know if you're interested in hearing about that. Now, another thing that I would recommend on the jars, if you're using something like this, so you can leave them just completely plain. You could get stickers to put on them. You could also paint on them um, different symbols or designs that invoke the energy that you're putting into the candle. So just things to keep in mind. I guess enough talking about it. Time to get our pot set up and show you guys how to melt the wax. Come on, let's go. Hmm. Okay, time to get started. I've got here a pot of boiling water. Um, I have this filled about halfway and then I have my pitcher here. So with this, once we put the wax in here, we're just gonna set it down in the water and let it melt. Now, <clears throat> I have my bag of wax. I would recommend soy wax or coconut wax. I have quite a few jars over here that I'd like to do. I want to try to make about four candles today. So I have filled my pitcher up almost to the very top and then I'm going to set it in the hot water. You really don't want it boiling while it's in there. So make sure that if it starts to boil, once you put your pitcher in, that you turn the heat down just a little bit. Keep it kind of simmering and stir your wax. Now you don't have to stir it the whole time. And make sure you pay attention to it and mix it around. That'll help it evenly distribute the heat and the wax is going to melt a little bit easier. If you want to add any kind of essential oils, now is not the time to do it. The wax is going to get really hot. <clears throat> if you put the essential oils in the wax too soon, then you're going to lose the fragrance. Uh, you're just going to cook them away. So you want to wait, melt your wax, and then once we pour it into the jars, we'll wait a couple of minutes and let it cool down and add the oil in. So don't get eager and pour it in now. This does take a little bit of time, so don't expect to just dump your wax in and it's going to melt right away. Of course, it's going to depend on how much wax that you put in here as well. Already, my wax has gone from being just a couple of inches from the top to about halfway down. I'm probably going to add a little bit more wax in just a minute because I want to make sure that I have enough to do the candles that I have lined up over here. 
if I melt too much wax, then not only will you see the wood wicks, but you will see the other wicks as well. So actually, maybe we should just plan on doing a couple of wooden wicks and a couple of the normal wicks. I want to show you guys how to do that because a lot of you might not be able to find the wooden wicks locally. Um, they're going to be a little bit more expensive as well. And if you just want the regular wicks, it's a little bit trickier when you put them in, but it's really easy. So I'll show you today and I'm going to show you a couple of different methods. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys this. You remember we started off, the wax was up to about right here. I don't know if you can see in here. I guess you can't see. I can't really show you this very well. But it's melted down. It went from about right here to about down to here so far. So you can see you want to get about three times as much wax as what you need for whatever candles you're making melted. If you want to be precise, of course, you could take your molds and you could measure them three times and pour them in here. That would be the sensible way to do things. If you're like me, however, you might just start making them. I'm using the Cobalt Blue Coconut Secret jars today. I do have um, other jars. I'll show you really quick. I have this cute little jar. This is actually a mustard jar. Um, and I save jars like this so that I can make candles. This just looks like a nice plain jar. But you'll see it has the beautiful little flowers in it. Again, I'll do a video soon and show you guys how to do this. So that's not something, don't go throw flowers in here. No, no, no. I'll show you how to do that soon. If your water starts to boil, you do want to just adjust the heat. Don't want it too hot with the wax. I hope you guys are enjoying this. This was one of my most requested videos so far. I really appreciate when you guys give me ideas. Tell me what you want to see. I have so many ideas running through my head. I don't even know where to start. If you want me to talk about candle magic or you want me to show you how to do these flowers, just comment down below. I'm listening to you guys. I know that there's a couple of other videos that you really want to see. So I will be doing those very soon. But in the meantime, comment. Tell me what you want to see. Now it looks like my wax is all done. So we started off with flakes. You guys see this? After just a few minutes, it's melted into a liquid. Now I'm gonna move over here. Let's get crafty. Okay, so I have our wax and our molds. Um, now, like I said, I'm gonna be using the wood wicks. These are the bottoms. And then you get, so these are called, what are they called exactly? Flat wick clip. That is the bottom. Um, these are from the wooden wick company. Got these from a friend a few months ago just before the holidays to make a candle for her mom for Christmas and she let me keep the rest. I'm so happy about that. Thank you, Nicole. Um, these have been awesome. What you want to do, you don't want to just drop this in here because then once you put the wax in there, it's going to move around. You need to get this on the bottom. The best way to do that is just use the wax itself. You want to make sure you get a nice coating of the wax on there. And then we're going to take it and put it right in the middle where we want the wick. Just hold it in place for a minute. As the wax cools, the wax will act as a glue. You can see, I might have noticed it was sliding at first, and now it's sitting right where it needs to be. Now these can be a little trickier because once you get wax on them, the whole thing's going to become pliable. I'm going to put a link down below for the wax that I ordered that came with these. They came with these as well as the wicks and the soy wax. These are really convenient. I'd never used these before. These you just set on top of whatever you're using and you're going to clip your wick into it and it's going to hold it right in place. These make this so much easier. So easy. So if you can get these, if you don't have these, you can use a clothespin and they work nicely as well. You set them on the side where you want them and they're going to hold the wick in place. 
This is something I've recently learned. Used to, I would tie a string. I would put tape on the side and I would wrap um, thread and hold it into place. So that's another option. I'm not doing that right now. If you'd like me to actually demonstrate that, comment down below, let me know. I'll be happy to do it for you. Um, but today I'm gonna do it the ways that are a little bit easier. I'll show you the clothespin method. A lot of you will have a clothespin or even a little clip from around the kitchen on hand that you can use to hold your wick in place. So now with this, again, dip your wick in. You'll hold it into place. Get it to stick where you'd like it to stick. And if you're using one of these, put this in place. Okay, so got that all in place. Now I'm going to show you the clothespin method. So again, just the very end of the metal, put it in the wax. Nice coating. Over here, that's, whoops, that's going to be your glue. Just hold it down on the bottom. I know you guys can't see what I'm doing, but it's really simple. You want to put it in the middle where you'd like your wick. Hold it still, and then you're going to take the clothespin and just balance it on the side so it'll sit where you'd like for it to hold it. And we've let our oil cool for a little bit, so we are going to go ahead and pour it into our molds. Whoops. Um, if your wick tries to move, just hold it into place. And even with the wood wicks, if they start to move, you can use a um, clothespin to hold them. Last time I did this, I remember it staying a little bit better. So again, hold any wick into place. Just use a clothespin and voila, it is where it should be. Now we have our clothespin method with the basic cotton wick. You will notice it's going to move a little bit. So hold on to it. Fill your candle up. Uh, Oh, and it pulled off the bottom. Okay, so if this happens, I'm going to use a wooden wick just because I have it here on hand. Oh, my God. Um, Here we go. Let's show how not to make a freaking candle. Um, Pull it apart. Show you guys. <laughs> I'm not perfect at this. I do mess up. It's not doing good. So maybe next time Sandy should not drink wine while making candles. Um, let's try, I think this is what I did last time. Let's see. Okay, so, two clothespin method. Um, ah! Okay, that is not working. Good lord, I am making a mess here, you guys. I have wax everywhere. My wick is so not straight, you guys. Oh my. Okay, so okay. I'm going to try something a little different. I'm going to stick right through the middle of the clothespin. That did not work. And... Yeah, this is not working. I don't recommend <laughs> doing this. Uh, okay, so this is going to just do for now. This wick is a little weird inside of there. So if you're going to use a clothespin, make sure it fits across the top of the jar. Hold on, let me clean my waxy fingers. Okay, so I'm really going to say these are awesome. See this little, these that I mentioned before? These are great because when you pour your wax with these, it goes nowhere. Your wick is going to stay where it's supposed to be. Clothespins, only when they fit across the top. That's ridiculous. My hands are waxy. That's ridiculous. So I just showed you guys how not to. You're welcome. Don't make handles like that. Make them like this. Clothespin works well with the wooden wick when it's just off the side, but not so much here. This candle should be okay, but I would not recommend that method whatsoever. Um, I will show you guys. Let me know. Again, comment down below. Let me know if you would like to see how to use the string method to hold these wicks up. I have just a tiny bit of wax. Now, I have a smaller jar. Didn't plan on using this one quite yet, so it does have a little stickiness on it. Um, I can clean that off once the candle's made. You guys might be able to see a little bit better what it is I'm doing here. So holding that down to the bottom, measure it before, pop, pop, and get it to where it touches, boom, right at the bottom. Then put your wax on. 
over to the jar, press it down to the bottom. That is in place. Now, this is how we make these work better. So with that holding it up, going to pour the wax in. And even though the wick is getting soft, the clothespin is holding it basically where it is supposed to be. If it gets knocked over, just move it. While the wax is hot, you can still move your wick around. So now you can see the wax inside. Now all of the wax has cooled down so we can go ahead and add our oils. These two are blends that have a few different essential oils in them. There's a pillow potion and heart song. I have jasmine. Jasmine is my all-time favorite essential oil. I'm wearing some now. And then over here you'll see whoa, a plethora of essential oils. I'm going to show you how to make a candle that not only smells pleasant, but also helps to repel insects. It is springtime. It's that time of year where we have to start thinking about mosquitoes and different pests. We'll also be showing you guys a spray that I make that will help to repel bugs. But you can burn these candles outside with all of the different oils. Now first we'll start off with our small candle because it's going to cool quicker. And I will add in here, I'm going to add about let's say 16 drops. I don't like too heavy of a fragrance, but you want to make sure that you can smell it. And then you'll stir it up just a little. Mm, that smells nice. Okay, then my next one is Heart Song. This is 16 ounces. So I put about 50 drops in there. Stir this around a little bit. Don't want the fragrance just to be at the top of the jar. Next, I'm adding jasmine. The jasmine, I really want to be strong, so I'm probably going to add a little bit more. Some essential oils, they will drip a little bit slower. If you want to, you can remove the tops and measure with a teaspoon, not a teaspoon, you don't want to put a teaspoon in, but you can measure out how much you'd like in there. This is all personal preference on the scents, so you guys don't have to listen to me at all on how many drops to put in here. Just do it. Smell, oh, don't stick it to your nose. Um, do it, smell it, and see if that's strong enough. Again, I love jasmine. Up a little more. Oh, that smells so good. Okay, and then for the last one with the wood wick. Now, this will be nice outside on my deck because it'll have a little crackling, so it'll be like I'm burning a fire out there. So for this candle, and to be a nice, strong, potent candle to repel insects with, I'm going to want to make this a little bit stronger than I would the ones that I burn in my house. I have seven oils here that I'm going to be adding. I'm probably going to add around 100 drops of essential oil. First, we're going to start with citronella, which I do not care for the smell of citronella very much at all. It's probably why it repels bugs. Um, so for this, knowing that it's one that repels the insects, I want to add extra of this. I'm going to do about 15 drops of citronella. And then, oh God, I do not like the smell of that. Ew. Okay. And then sweet orange. Sweet orange is nice balance for the citronella to kind of balance out that terrible smell. And it also helps to repel bugs, but it's a nice sweet smell. So I'm going to add 15 drops of the sweet orange, and then we're going to use lemongrass. Lemongrass is nice, but I find it's best used in small quantities. Too much, and it becomes pungent and not so pleasant. I'm going to add about five drops. Then I'm going to use Lang Lang. I really love this. Oh my God, it smells so good. And it helps to balance out any of that citronella as well. This smells so good. I could do a candle just of this. So this I will add just a few drops. I will add probably nine. And then next patchouli. I'm gonna add about nine drops of it. And now we have lavender. Lavender is relaxing. And it's also great insect repellent. I have a spray, like I've mentioned, I'm going to show you guys how to make. Lavender has to be in it. So with lavender, this is another one that we can go a little heavier on. I'm going to add about 20 drops of lavender. 
Okay, so this puts us just under 80 drops. And then next is peppermint. Um, peppermint is great insect repellent. And add about 11 drops. Now, I had said we'd end up with around 100 drops because I guessed. Um, <laughs> we have closer to 90 drops of essential oil in this one. So this is going to be a lot stronger in fragrance, but it's going to be a wonderful outdoor candle for the spring and summer. Yeah, that's a nice smell, you guys. You might see this one's already changing color, so it's starting to set. These are going to need a few hours at minimum. The larger the candles, of course, the longer cool time that they're going to have. Um, I would give these about 24 hours to completely cure before I would try to burn them. And then at that point, I'm going to remove all of the clips and cut the wicks down to the right height. You can put their lids on them if you're not going to use them right away. That's going to help to lock in the scents. So you guys may notice my cute little hanger holding here. Um, I've had these displayed in past videos with flickering candles in the background. These are awesome. Um, these are little macrame holders that I made to hold these jars. If you're interested in seeing these, please comment down below and let me know. I hope that you will all subscribe below. If you have not yet subscribed, I mean, seriously, what are you waiting for? Go ahead, subscribe. Turn on the bell icon. Don't want to miss out on what I'm brewing up for you here in my witchy kitchen. And when you turn on that bell icon, then you'll be notified every time I post a new video. So thank you guys for joining me here in my witchy kitchen on my day off today, making some candles. I, I might continue making a few more candles after this. I don't know. Definitely probably going to have another glass of wine after this. So cheers, you guys. <laughs> I have got a day off to go and enjoy. So I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Until we meet again, remember, friends, be crafty.